Hello, sir. Hello. How are you? I'm okay. How, how are you? Good. So, oh, we're the first ones here. We are. So I shared those um, the analysis library I, talk, I spoke to you about Great. with Al Alexander. Yes. Hi, oh. Bork. He hasn't got back to me. I only gave it to him yesterday just because I needed to do some comments and stuff. So we'll see. We'll see what he thinks. Okay. Excellent. Hi, Podrig. Hello. How's it going? I'm okay. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Good. Hey, Andre. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. All right. Getting going here. Are you back on some regular schedule after uh, after the meeting is all calmed down and everything? It would be nice to think, but um, at the moment <laughs> uh, I'm well. In the next week or so, I have to uh, finish contributing to a, a new EU project proposal, which uh, should be a decent next few years funding for NeuroML. Um, so that's quite important. Um, some of the um, SBML, uh, CellML people are getting together to have one big European project which will support a lot of those initiatives and NeuroML is involved in that, so uh, that will be quite significant, so that's going to occupy uh, me for another few weeks. That's but um, yeah, after that, I, th I think it's it's mainly, it should be kind of calming down now, but um, the deadline is in two weeks. Okay. Hello. 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 <coughs> hey, Mateo. Hey, everyone. How's it going? How are you? Well, thank you. Expecting a few more. Three thousand five hundred. Ah, you stole my Jesus. thunder! Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> that was gonna be my update. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, the, for those of you who are no, we'll uh, here we'll early, early birds get the worm, I guess. 
You can do it for the others. You can do it officially when everyone comes. Ah, up. whatever. It's fine. <laughs> They're running late anyway. Yeah. So why don't you why don't you roll over the top uh, that top uh, uh, point data point there Eek. so people can see the number. Which one? It's the one that's the peak for yesterday. How many? There you go. So twelve thousand. What is it? Eighteen. Twelve hundred. A thousand two hundred. Yeah, twelve thousand. Yeah, right. Twelve hundred eighteen. Yeah. Um. So that's that's the big news is that the worm browser is blowing up. <laughs> it's going viral. <laughs> um. People like it. So that's a good thing. Um, it also seems to be translating into traffic for the OpenWorm site, uh, the, the main site, uh, which is good. So people are kind of starting with uh, the Worm browser and then clicking through to the project, uh, which is which is good. It's highlighting actually the effort. Um, although we haven't seen, so most of our traffic right now is coming from ChromeExperiments.com, uh, which is which is where we posted it the other day. Um, so I, I guess the translation to openworm.org is quite a bit attenuated <laughs> compared to that. So, yeah. um, so we do get fewer folks coming in to the project, but we're still having really pretty good traffic over there, all, all things considered. Um, yeah, she moved over. Yeah. yeah, it's like these people that are visiting now are kind of interested on the ma uh, being on Chrome Experiment. Maybe they're interested more on the technological side, while they don't care as much about our institutional slash research effort. <laughs> yeah. so anyway. anyway, so yeah, so that's exciting, and I'll, I'll check that off my list for now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. No, 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 no. It's good. It's good. Actually, um, it's very cool. I mean, we are in, in the entire, you know, one, you know, year-long history of this project, we have never had 1,200 hits thing that we've ever put out in a day. So um, it's kind of a big day. Um, whether it's for just because people think the 3D stuff is cool, you know, that's fine. I'll take it. Uh, I guess it's also worth posting uh, this thing that every that all of you seem to have also well let's see also you seem to have been shared on which was a, a Google a Google Plus post uh, actually looks like looks like he added everyone who's on the current people page so Mike I think you may have not yet been added on that so um, so he's got everybody else though but yeah um, so what is it I just posted it in the chat there oh okay. Check the chat. Good. Um, anyway, it's just a site called artificialbrains.com, which seems to be aggregating news about the different um, the different efforts to do simulations. I hadn't actually heard about this site before, but uh, they've got the DARPA Synapse project. They've got Blue Brain. They've got Spinnaker and Brain Scales. Um, apparently, Google X Lab people seem to be doing something in AI. I'm not sure. But uh, it's kind of a nice site, actually, uh, for doing this aggregation. The website tracks the latest scientific and technological progress um, towards the goal of building artificial brains. Thank you. Um, can I read the final sentence in the about? Would anybody be offended if I did that? What? No. no. Why not? No. Uh, on the website. Um, <coughs> by reverse engineering the human brain, we'll be, we will come to understand it. By reconstructing and enhancing the brain, we will be empowered to push forward our understanding of the universe and begin colonization beyond Earth. <laughs> <laughs> not our site. <laughs> Sorry? It's not our site. That's I the know. way to go. <laughs> I know. Um, Are you concerned? Are you I'm it's a little bit concerning. It's it's I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what people think. I mean, um, it's a public uh, go ahead, go Google ahead. page, no, so no. anyone can share uh, anything. Oh, no, 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 absolutely, they absolutely. Happen to link um, to us. 
I think there are some strange opinions out there about what all of these initiatives are leading to. Um, I think that most people involved in the projects listed there, for example, are a bit more realistic about the neuroscience behind this and everything else. So I think this can be this can go down a route where there's a lot of talk about artificial life. Um, it may attract some people who are less into the day-to-day -day neuroscience than... Yeah. We're nuts. <laughs> well, absolutely. Um, I mean, we do have some crossover appeal to the transhumanist community. Um, this has already been well known. Um, so, David Dalrymple, for example, who's another individual who has um, received you know, some attention about his ideas for how to go about doing C. elegans modeling. Um, actually, I think, you know, was at the Singularity Institute and got a lot of support, uh, met people there that helped support him on that. So that whole Ray Kurzweil singularity transhumanism aspect of, of the project is something that, peop that appeals to people. And I think that... Um, this is obviously, there's a bit of a culture clash between that and um, the scientific, the, the, you know, hardcore scientific neuroscience community. Yeah. Um, uh, so, um, by the way, let's all remember, by the way, that this hangout is, is a public, this is a public hangout. <laughs> it's being archived. And, <laughs> so just, just for purposes of, of everyone remembering. Um, yeah. no, no. This, so there's an archive of this. But, but I, I think it's important to just be you know, very straightforward about it. Like, I think that yeah. it does have appeal in, in these other communities. And I think that that's OK. I think that's good. I think that, um, that um, if we capture people's imagination with this project, then that's great. I think that um, if your concern is that in some ways we'll, be, we'll reduce our credibility amongst the scientific community, that's understandable. Um, however, I think that you know we get to choose um, you know how we how we respond to that attention. Um, we get yeah. to res you know we, we get to choose how um, you know how to, how to deal with that. I mean, I, I I think anybody who's excited to do anything with this project in any direction is fantastic. I think that um, obviously when it comes to publishing in neuroscientific journals, we're going to need to meet the standard that the neuroscience community has. Uh, and the computational neuroscience community has for what constitutes, you know, good work for them. Yeah. Um, but since you know this is not a project that's funded by a university, um, and that it's a bit of a it's a bit of a new experiment in open science, um, you know, we're likely to run into folks that are excited about the project for different reasons. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but I take your I take your concern. I take your concern yeah. seriously. Fine. Uh, yeah. So, um, okay. feel free to you know feel free to, to to give me additional suggestions. You know. Yeah, I mean it. it yeah. Whenever you feel like it. Okay. I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts on this. Um, it's it, it's not it, again. It's not a so much a criticism, but it is an area that a lot of people who are involved in C. Elgin's research, if they think that this is associated with a different group of people, then this could potentially lead to a loss of scientific credibility for some aspects of the project. I think I... I don't think we can control... Yeah, uh, that's, that's what I, I was don't think saying. We can yeah. I don't think we can control in my <laughs> personal experience. I mean, that guy just like posted our, a, a link <laughs> to our thing, so uh, <laughs> uh, what do we do? We ask him to take it down? No, that's true. No, but I, um, <laughs> I think, I think uh, it a especially making some of the claims about the project, some of the language used. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you do start talking about... I mean, okay, it is headline... Gra or it is a screen grabber to say building an artificial life form, but if you do start wandering into that kind of territory too much and associating too much or it, it may, I mean you do ultimately for this to be scientifically successful you do need to attract day-to-day -day neuroscientists who um, uh, will look on this as a scientifically valid uh, endeavor. You don't want to put those off with um, any hints that this is 
a group of people who are thinking slightly out, too much outside the box. And that's all I'll say on the subject. But yeah, yeah, and I agree with with that. Um, so are you suggesting that we uh, modify the wording of some of the stuff we have on I don't, the side? I don't, think anything, I don't think anything at the moment has to change. Uh, I think it's maybe just something to bear in mind that um, it can get publicity. It can get publicity for the wrong reasons. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people, a lot of the, maybe the projects that have, won, that have been mentioned on that artificial brain site have wandered into the territory of asking for publicity and getting the wrong type of publicity. If somebody were to write a headline, were to write a newspaper article on Open Worm at the moment, they may write it in a way to say, these people think they are building artificial life. And if you see that, if that gets into publications, and people associate that, read that article, and they think that people are waiting for artificial intelligence to take over the universe, then you're gone before you even um, have a chance to uh, prove that this is something scientifically useful. Well, one thing, one thing on that, and I, and I think it's, um, I think uh, we, we should move on um, in, in a minute yeah. here, but I mean, there is, out of, out of the computer science world, I mean, there is, um, there are artificial life journals um, as a serious, um, as a serious topic of, of research, and uh, it is um, taught in some artificial intelligence classes um, so, I mean, we, 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 I did artificial life um, project when I was in, uh, when I was at MIT, so I, I guess we should be careful just when we say artificial life, what do we mean? I think that you mean it in some metaphysical, you, I think you're suggesting that, that there might be a metaphysical aspect to it. I'm, I'm, I'm also just reminding us, you know, that there, that there is a serious academic area of quote unquote artificial life um, for, you know, like chemical, like microbes that follow chemical gradients, um, you know, models of those in computers. Um, so I'm not even 100%, I'm not that uncomfortable with the, with the terminology of artificial life given that background for it. Do you, do you see it differently? No, I, I think there's definitely a field in that area, but that term is, would be used by more widely by other people looking at, or understood uh, by people reading a popular science article in a completely different way. And a completely different motivation behind the initiative. Um, yeah, I, I think this is <coughs> probably a wider topic. It's probably not something to discuss in detail now, but um, yeah. I would just highlighting a little bit of a concern just for people maybe to bear in mind. And I, I, yeah. But I, th I think I, I agree with Stephen, and then uh, and then we can move on. Stephen, sorry. But I think I agree with you in that uh, uh, all we can do is control what is the outcome of, uh, let's say, our statements and, let's say, our blog posts and make clear that uh, we are on the side of science and not on the side of, you know, an over-enthusiastic and over-zealous uh, statement. Science but, fiction. Uh, yeah, it's like we are science, not science fiction. That's what we're trying to do and that we can control. But if at some stage there is some science fiction enthusiast guy that also gets excited about this project because he, he, he sees uh, in his mind a sort of correlation. Uh, I mean, that I would just take the good part of it in terms of marketing <laughs> and more visit and more people, a as long as we make clear what we're doing. Yeah, I think as long as as long as we're, you know, l like like Matteo saying, as long as we're super clear on the sources we control that it is a, a, a thoroughly scientific project. It's a bit like in physics, you know, you get a physicist, physicist make an announcement and there's always some, some sort of theory, you know, people writing articles, oh, this means that we're going to be able to travel back in time and all sorts of wacky things. But it, people still take those scientists seriously because on the sources they control, they're very clear about, about what they're doing. And I think, I think as long as, I think as, long as, as we do that, then. But, but I think Podrick is right that it's definitely something we need to keep in mind at the forefront of our minds, actually, because you definitely don't want to be associated with being, you know, overly enthusiastic and unrealistic and so on and so forth. Right. Well, so this, this actually will, this will come up again. So the, the purpose of this meeting is for us to um, do a bit of reflection on the last, uh, on the last sprint period, as well as to 
chart a course for the future. And this question that we're, we're discussing right now is also relevant because we are trying to do a fundraising push. And we are in the process of deciding what is the message that we're going to put out for that fundraising push. And so I actually foresee this being a subject that we're going to have to really try to walk a fine line. Um, and I think that it's, it's going to be an interesting experiment for this project, basically because what we want to do is we want to ask the general public to help support this project. Um, one of the main things that I think we should, we should get out of that amongst, amongst others is that we should raise enough money that we can have a meeting where we can actually pay for all of us to get together. Um, and you know, probably somewhere in Europe makes the most sense. Um, but some place where we can we can pay for everybody's plane tickets and hotel and so this is not a this is not a small amount of, of money um, that we that we need to ask everybody for. At the same time, um, it's a very different than uh, writing a proposal, a scientific proposal, where the people that are going to evaluate you are going to be other members of the scientific community. Um, basically, um, we you know we need to figure out a way to convey what the project is doing so that somebody can understand it, and um, who isn't scientifically trained enough to want to donate, but at the same time for us not to go overboard on the other side and sound, uh, you know, like it's it's incredible for, uh, from a scientific perspective what we want to do. So the um, so th this internet is for, but there is a document for the minutes today that is linked. Um, I can see that not everyone has found it yet. You can find it. Uh, there's now a tab on the lower left-hand side for people and apps. If you click down to apps, you should see Google Docs as one of the apps that are enabled. And then if you click on, or, or maybe if you actually, yeah, no, that, that's the way to do it. And then uh, if you click on Docs, you'll see that there's a list of documents. And you should see uh, April 4th, 2012, Agenda for Open Word Meeting. Um, so I can <laughs> so I can already foresee just based on this conversation that we're going to have a lot of discussion. But but uh, but the open worm is all about transparency. So um, so we need to we need to really confront these concerns rather than, than shrink from them. The way that they're going to ma manifest themselves in the, in the near future are going to be in this fundraising effort. There's a document that's linked there for uh, what uh, what a subgroup of us have started to put out for. Um, what the page will look like uh, when folks go to the Kickstarter and see uh, what progress we've made. Um, and then below that, there's a link to a video proposal from someone who has um, offered to help us uh, do that process of taking the project and turning it into video form such that it's understandable to the outside public. Um, and he is a person who doesn't have any scientific uh, experience or training, so you can have a look through that uh, page and a half of what he's proposed. Um, the beginnings of it seems to, seems to be good. Um, you can also check out his website. Uh, his name is Kyle Trainer. He has, he has some very nice uh, demos of what he's able to do. But he's basically coming from uh, the world of, of filmmaking, and um, you know, uh, I, we asked him to help us because every Kickstarter project seems to have some kind of video. Um, and we asked him to do it in a way that would connect with, with the general public. So let's think about this. I mean, what, <laughs> and, and maybe just take a few minutes here for us to, to kick this around. I think really what we, should, what we are going to do is, is convene a subcommittee of, of you all. Um, anyone who's interested in this Kickstarter topic, uh, maybe a little bit later this week, we'll have another meeting for us to go in more in depth. Um, but uh, given that, you know, given that we're you know, not going for a regular scientific grant and we are wanting to connect with the public, um, what thoughts do any of you have for how we should, um, anything that just jumps right out at you in terms of what we should uh, do or not do with regards to this, uh, with regards to this application? I want to hear Patrick's thoughts to digest it. Well, I, I, th I think mainly it is, it is a, a fundamental question about how much you want to push the scientific um, uh, goals of the project and how much you can get away with as far as the kind of more, um, the more marketing, the more kind of like yeah. quite sensational, the, the more popular science aspect. The problem mean, yeah. with that platform, uh, which is Kickstarter, is that people want to know, if you talk about specifics, they want to understand. 
and they will lose yeah. interest. So I, I, I don't think it's, it's a problem a with the platform. I don't think it's a problem with the platform. It's more the target audience. People go there to, yeah, to find it's products. like we're going to the general public and knowledge of general public uh, in terms of what scientifically we're trying to do is limited. So we need to convey the best way to explain what we're trying to do. And that might imply some language that usually is associated with more popular Popular science, science. as you say. But at the same time, uh, if you steer away from it, then we're basically saying, okay, then our target is not anymore the enthusiast uh, who like who would like to donate uh, ten dollars to the project just because he understands what we want to do so we need to be careful okay. you can still you can still s- sorry you can still explain things to the general public and still be scientifically accurate it's hard but you can do that yeah. and that's yeah. why we need the uh, help from everyone to review whatever Doc, that, that particular document that Stephen linked, everyone has access to that, so we should review it together and put comments on it. There's a function, you can highlight text and right click comment. We can discuss on the document itself about that stuff, so. That's right. And this, and the second thing that's the video thing, we're just, we're just trying to digest because we just, uh, I, I just had a look at this yesterday, but, but you can see there, um, and this is, these are the words of this, this guy who I explained the project to very briefly, but I don't think I said uh, that we are creating artificial life, but he did hook on to what if we were able to create artificial life as sort of more opposing as, as a question. Um, so it's something that is already somewhat resonating with him. So I mean, I think that like, I mean, we obviously, we, we, we need to simplify it, but I think that there are ways to avoid, um, you know, being, uh, dishonest. I mean, I think that we aren't going to promise that we're going to, you know, cure cancer. Um, And I think that we have to define what we mean by, you know, creating a model of artificial life and and what those pieces and parts are. Um, I'm I'm not particularly, I'm not, that, and that particular word, artificial life, or phrase artificial life, I'm not married to it either. Um, But anyway, so it's going to be a balancing act, and I think that um, we need help to stay balanced so that we can both create something that uh, everybody can access, but that also s- keeps us within, you know, the realm of reason. <laughs> um, so um, I will okay. set up. I will set up an opportunity for us to talk about this more. Um, I'll take a poll. And obviously, everybody's time is limited and short, so we may not all be able to convene on it. But um, I'm generally laying laying this out. I mean, you're going to continue to have access to all these documents. you be able to weigh in at whatever time. So even if you, you know, have some time on your own and you just want to throw some comments in to this document as we're building it, or you know, and it'll be changing over time, you know, feel free to do that. Um, we're just trying to figure out a way that we can, you know, go outside the traditional, you know, funding mechanisms for something like this. Because um, okay. we know that there's other people who tried to fund a project like this and have been unsuccessful getting getting government grants. Um, there is a real need to explore this other space. So. Yeah. <coughs> anyway, so anyway, that kind of covers both the traffic for for the Worm browser and uh, and the Kickstarter stuff and the update on that. And you can basically see what's going on there. Um, Do you have an idea of the timeline for actually putting that uh, on Kickstarter? Right. Well, so <laughs> I, I think we <laughs> we wanted to have it up now. Uh, we don't. Um, we realize that we need a video. I think we realize now that it's going to take time to do the video, um, and that that's probably even the slowest part of it because we can hack up a, a document for Kickstarter and kind of do that in a couple weeks. So um, I think that it's kind of an ongoing process. We're, we're now going to check back and see, and I think there was supposed to be a sense of a timeline in this, in this document, but I guess there wasn't from the video guy. So I'll have to ask about that. Um, anyway, it's not going to happen <laughs> this week, for sure. Um, and I think if we target for you know beginning of May to actually have launched, I think we'll, that would be a really good place to be. That may even be a little ambitious. So there's definitely time to weigh in. Certainly another meeting to weigh in on any of this. And I, actually, Stephen, sorry. One thing I would like to ask is, uh, as part of the conversation for the Kickstarter, one of the things uh, we were thinking was uh, maybe to a way to convey 
the way that this project started, uh, uh, well, let's start with the premise that uh, w we think that the way this project came together is very peculiar, it's very interesting, even from a fictional point of view, the way that uh, all of us came together and the way that w now we are doing uh, these, like, distributed all over the world. So we were thinking that a nice, popular way to convey these could be using something like uh, a comic strip. Now, uh, I, I, I was thinking to start an effort in terms of uh, putting together a sort of a storyboard and so in, mm, and then it would be a storyboard that maybe we could ask a professional drawer to work on. But uh, basically the question I wanted to ask is, uh, well, if, anything, if anybody has any thoughts on this and if anybody would feel offended uh, by a, a, character, a, car a comic character despite his person <laughs> in the Kickstarter campaign. It doesn't need to be portraits anyway. Mm. Uh, would it take away to a certain extent from the seriousness? Um, I mean, you still want to look professional. Um, I mean, it, w it would be good. <coughs> sorry, it would be good for um, a an established project to um, show that there is a kind of a human kind of friendly side to it, and try to get people involved there. But when you're actually presenting it, I mean, you ultimately want these people to know that you can actually do what you're claiming to do, and that you are mainly professionals, um, professional software developers, professional scientists, and you actually want to go about this and create it. I mean, it, I, I think it would be nice, I think it would, but probably not uh, the first impression that somebody sees when they're deciding to support the project is a cartoon character, some cartoon characters, and maybe that's just <laughs> not their opinion. Uh, I, I think, uh, we, uh, as I said earlier, I think we need to, uh, because there's a trade-off. Okay. <coughs> so yeah. I think there is a trade-off in between, uh, again, uh, being, uh, we need to be serious and uh, we need obviously to be precise. At the same time, uh, uh, you know, the way marketing works is like, uh, if you, going to the extreme, okay, we're professional, we're scientists, so let's put in the front page for Kickstarter our CVs, like, and going to the extreme, all right? Nobody yes. would read them, and nobody would give a cent. So <laughs> we need to have the proper level, and of course that word proper is hiding the real problem, but we need to have the proper level of instruction popularity in order to convey this topic. I think from the from the aspect of raising money that might be a great idea but from the aspect of ta being taken seriously by the scientific neuroscientific community that might be a bit of a risk I don't know if I'd be willing to take to be honest I think it's a bit don't know I th I think I I think I, I agree with what Podrick said basically it's, it seems a bit like people might question question your uh, your legitimacy but, uh, seriousness. L let me say one thing. The first thing is, I agree. The second thing we need to pay attention is uh, because, like, uh, uh, being this pro project a bit of a crossover, okay, uh, it is true that uh, you would be attracting uh, more uh, donations and uh, that at some extent, uh, uh, like, you might discourage the pure scientists, but in a context like Kickstarter, are we trying to reach more the former or the latter? Are we trying to reach more like normal, let's say normal people that would actually be willing to donate, <coughs> or we're trying to reach the neuroscience community? I think in the context of Kickstarter, it would be more the first one, and uh, as long as we are like rigorous in what we say and like we explain we explain all the claims and maybe we have a section in the proposal like are you a scientist or something like that keep reading okay and then we go into more details uh, in order to back those kind of maybe popular claims or stuff like that yeah. well my, my, my point was more about um, okay even even the popular science even the kind of ordinary public who um, are just reading the who 
have a look at the um, application and who are interested in it initially, they will still realize that this is a very difficult technical task and you have to have uh, competent technical people behind this. I mean, they're not going to be convinced just by the um, uh, cartoons. They will, and to a certain extent, it may take away from their assessment of whether these are uh, technically competent people that they're trying to make arguments with um, cartoons, if you see what I mean. I, I mean, I, I think it is I, I think it is appropriate at a different level, but I mean, when you're trying to convince people to part with their money for... But the uh, okay, so in, in the interest of time, let, let Matteo maybe just say, say one last thing. I think that this is really important. I think that uh, that these two viewpoints here are extremely important for us to represent. Should I have a meeting I, I, on I, this yeah, alone. I, right? I hope, Corey, that you have a little bit of extra bandwidth in the next week, week or two, um, to help us uh, balance between these. And anybody else, Mike, if, you know, and obviously anyone who wants to weigh in on it. Um, but I do think we need to represent this. Uh, we need to have this balance. Um, yep. You know, so I think uh, we do have a lot we want to get done today. But maybe, Matei, if you just want to say one one last thing, and then we can. Yeah, well, uh, ju just one last thing to answer, Porterick, is uh, I agree, but uh, the like. I was thinking of using such a comic strip in order to uh, kind of explain in a nice way how we got together, okay, not to make arguments that, uh, oh, that, that we are going to make the worm because, like, I don't know, we have a superhero t-shirt or something like that. No, it's just how we got together and those are facts just presented in a nice way. Then at the end of the day, from the for the scientific community, I think what will matter are results and like regardless if in the start page uh, in the front page of your Kickstarter you have CVs or a comic strip it will be results that will basically convince or not the community the scientific community so that's the kind of point of view I'm taking okay. so yeah and we can we can we can debate it and you know there there is the there is the video which will have some human aspect to it obviously um, and but we also want to convey the science um, so we'll see if, in addition to that, the comic strip you know makes sense, or if the storyboard for the comic strip becomes the storyboard for the video. And anyway, there's still many different directions for this to go, and it's certainly not not set in stone. But but we should probably move on. Um, but I really appreciate you guys, all all your perspectives. And I, you know, it's for a project like this where academics and engineers are coming together um, from different perspectives. It's natural that we're going to have uh, different opinions on this. And um, so I think that we just got to spend the time to hash them out. Um, OK, so the, the idea of this uh, session, and we only really have 50 minutes uh, left to do it in, so probably we'll have to do somewhat online. But, but I'll just, we'll at least just start the process, is to say, OK, we started release two uh, last uh, so August or September, um, September maybe October, actually, after the neuroinformatics meeting in, in Boston. And we set down the following, um, the following components that we wanted to, to discuss, these eight different epics, um, following kind of the agile model of, of development. And um, we've made some progress um, on some, and others we haven't maybe made as much progress as we would like. Um, and this is just a time for us to kind of review what we have done and what we, what we haven't done. But the purpose of defining our goals in this manner is something known as a user story. Uh, we define them in this manner as a way to focus development towards that particular towards that particular goal, and this comes from a whole range of, uh, of, of methodology for, for developing things as a team called sort of known as Agile. Um, in the first sprint, in the first release, I think we adhered fairly well to Agile practices. Um, we were using a tool uh, known as JIRA, um, those of you who came on the project in, in this uh, release haven't seen it because we haven't used it. Um, we, we decided to switch over to a system that was more tracking with Google Docs, um, mainly because it was easier for people to access and, and easier for people to use. Um, I think that uh, to some extent we maybe have been a little bit less organized in our move away from that. Um, I think, and I can personally uh, blame myself for that. Um, but, um, but nonetheless, um, that's the subject for us to, to review, I think, as we, as we go to the future. But basically, what we need to figure out now is that we're looking forward to what we're going to, what we're going to kind of focus on for release three. And there's some new people who have come uh, to join us. Uh, Balash, actually, who obviously isn't here right now, did send me a note just before this. He 
he said he was very sorry, completely his mistake. He uh, double booked this time. Um, he doesn't. He wants everyone to know that it's, it's a reflection on his uh, commitment to, to continuing to work with the project. Um, so he did want to. He, he has injected some ideas of what he wants, uh, what he would like to see in release three, which I'll, I'll talk about in a bit. But anyway, um, so the purpose of, of this now is just for us to look over what we have gotten done which I think is a lot, and I think even though we haven't necessarily hit all these goals, we've actually done a lot of things um, uh, that uh, are valuable and important, and just think about um, into the next release both what kinds of goals do we want to set for ourselves, and as well what sort of process changes do we need to make to the way it's, it's run currently, um, so that we uh, just make sure that we're continually improving our process, making sure that it works for everyone, making sure that everyone feels like they're both not constrained to, um, you know, to, to doing things that, uh, you know, drive them uh, to a point where they're unable to participate, but at the same time also feel like they're organized enough so that everyone's kind of making uh, continual progress. For the future. So um, let's just review, okay, so, and, and let's talk a little bit. I did link here in the first uh, point, release to review. Uh, you can click there and get the sprint history, which is the spreadsheet that uh, we've been kind of working through. And you'll notice that it's got 12, or no, probably like 10, 10 tabs. Every tab was for one of the sprints uh, that we that we hit. And so, um, uh, the this uh, spreadsheet, if you click through to it, is organized as well. The second column has uh, a name that should generally tell you what had what uh, broad epic it was related to. Um, so you can kind of see over time. Uh, in a core sense, um, kind of things that we did to, to meet these different goals. But broadly speaking, um, uh, my sort of review of what we did in genetic algorithms, when we started in, in September, October, um, well, Alex hadn't come onto the project you know, prior to then, so Alex really got started then. And Alex, um, I think, has made a lot of progress on this, which is why I've colored it in green. Um, he has applied the genetic algorithm that um, that Jordan Boyle used to the very limited sort of hacked up data that we have from from um, from that paper. Um, although it's sort of the best that we have had to work with, it's the best that uh, we have currently. I'm continuing to work on getting better data there, but uh, it's it's challenging. Uh, we can talk about that. But he did actually run a genetic algorithm. We saw the results of that genetic algorithm. He checked the code in. The code is available on the site. Um, we got some results from that. We did get uh, a fit for those parameters. And those parameters are now available for us to put into our muscle cell model um, and and experiment around with. So I think that um, that uh, in, as far as the muscle cell part of this is concerned, that got finished. Now I guess I should probably, as I look more closely, I realize that there is that we did actually have motor neurons as something that we uh, potentially wanted to do here, and we haven't really done anything with motor neurons with regards to genetic algorithms in this current sprint. And that's partially because we um, turned our attention to the technology behind the way that we were doing genetic algorithms, and we realized that we want to do this not just as a, as a one-off, we want to integrate it with other pieces, and so I think we, we went down the road of, of integration rather than going into motor neurons. So that was my observation of what has happened with genetic algorithm. Um, uh, the way that I want to do this is just kind of go all for review and then do planning for the next step uh, as, a, as a next piece, but let me just pause there and say, Alex, did I represent what we have done with the genetic algorithms um, up until now accurately? Or is there additional things that should be pointed out here for what we did? No, do? I, don't. I think you mentioned basically everything. Okay. Okay, so that's great. So, um, so, so release two, we did work with genetic algorithms. We had done no work with genetic algorithms. We have results. We have code. I think it was it was hugely successful. So, um, so that was great. Okay. Um, next component: simulation engine. Again, a lot of work got done here. Um, we I don't don't think we exactly reached the goals that we had for ourselves, but we did do quite a bit of work. So let's just review these two. So Epic two was I want to run a model developed in NeuroML on our simulation engine to be able to run NeuroML models on the Amazon cloud. So what we what we did to break that one up is that um, we went down the road of making sure that we had our model in expressed uh, as NeuroML. Um, 
so that um, so we had I think at the end of release one done a, most of the conversions from Blender into NeuroML. That was the code that Sergey wrote um, that that did that. That code got checked in. That was excellent. So I think we'd pretty much wrap that up at the end of release release uh, one. But in release two, we've really been expanding what we've had in that NeuroML and what we as a as a as a intermediate step to running it in the simulation engine, we wanted to be able to run this on Neuron. Uh, we wanted to be able to convert the, the NeuroML into Neuron to demonstrate that we had NeuroML that was valid and um, that it was able to run. And we did do that when we were in Edinburgh. So we did actually run that. I saw Saporg actually got that to work through through NeuroConstruct, which we greatly appreciate. Uh, we got to see it run. Uh, we made a goofy movie. We put it out on Twitter. Um, so that much, that much, that part of this, we did get. Um, obviously, what we haven't yet done is incorporated that into the simulation engine, um, and uh, and get a parser to do that. However, the second piece of this uh, is that we have run, uh, we have run. Let's see, we haven't done a lot more with the Amazon Cloud since. Um, since the last release, either I guess. No, because we basically we're, we're in the process of switching to different Java bindings for the open sales stuff. Was keeping us back basically. Right. So right, right. and now we're still waiting on some of that stuff and, and because of the, the problem with the bund OSGI bundles. So that that's still ongoing. Right. And uh, even the effort uh, we did on um, Maven, basically moving to Maven, w is also in That's right. basically to, to facilitate the Amazon deployment. That's right. So what uh, what really got done in terms of simulation engine is that Maven uh, refactoring and transition from JOCL to JavaCL for the OpenCL well bindings. Plus the SPH solver. Oh yes, uh, oh yes. That but uh, that there's game. another epic for that. Yeah. No, just because you said the simulation engine. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this this was this was this is all these are all prerequisites to getting to that goal, and and those are all very important pieces, as well. Um, so um, obviously we spend a lot of time on some other things too. But anyway, so that's where we are with that one. Um, do you guys have anything else to add to that? Part. Well, there was also the um, front-end refactoring, which is uh, basically uh, n now it looks much better. I mean, I I it's obviously just a simple front-end uh, to output uh, in a chart the results of the neuronal simulation. But nonetheless, uh, uh, like, surely if we want to expose it. Uh, uh, let's say, to the general public so that they can play with it. Uh, that was also a prerequisite because the previous technology based on rendering images server-side uh, wasn't uh, fit for that. Yeah. Do you have that demo up there, one of you guys? Can I you can bring it? it up. Can you launch it just so that we can see it's what... Gonna take, it's going to take a few minutes, so okay. maybe... All right. So I'll, I'll move on to describing it, but it's probably good since we're doing a review anyway to just see, like, what the latest is with that, yeah. um, with that epic. <coughs> Questions about that, anybody? Especially you guys who kind of newer. Um, about simulation engine. Yes. In general. Um, I have something to add, maybe uh, two or three minutes. Yes. Uh, about um, results achieved um, during the last two weeks. Great. Um, first of all, I'm very grateful to Sergey, who. Um, we all uh, are. <laughs> <laughs> Who have solved the problem uh, with um, uh, graphics uh, nice. in uh, SPH? Um, it, it previously took uh, too much time uh, to draw uh, our uh, simulated liquid, uh, but he found all the places which took uh, the majority of time uh, and optimized it. Uh, well, I think. So now it's um, not a limiting factor anymore. Uh, I will try to share uh, the screen. Nice. This gets onto the physics on the physics side, so it's the next topic. <laughs> it's perfect. Um. Okay. I think 
this one. So this epic, just as while he's getting that up, was about running a simulation and include muscle cell physics as well as muscle cell membrane excitability. Yeah, so this would have been the, the integrated piece. Is yeah. Oh, is it not the screen? I saw that. Yeah. I, you had your screen up, and now it's gone again. Hmm, I don't know why. Oh, yeah. <coughs> um, not the stage. That was uh, the beginning is more impressive. I will try again. <laughs> uh, I see a lot more particles in there. Still nothing. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh. There it is. So um, now uh, about um, ninety percent uh, is spent to calculation of uh, particles uh, coordinates and so on. And right. only a few, a few percent to graphics. Nice. Uh, and this is uh, this is uh, Sergei's result. Uh, and uh, now I'll tell about uh, my uh, success, um, my progress. Uh, I'll try to show on another screen. Nice job, Sergei. That's beautiful. Another screen. This one. Is it possible to see something? Yes. Yes. Okay. So on the left uh, we can see um, open sea kernels um, which um, work in original uh, version and um, average time uh, which is spent by uh, each kernel uh, during one uh, step of simulation. I have found a way to measure uh, nanosecond uh, intervals uh, of um, function work. Previously, uh, it was only milliseconds, but now we can measure very small uh, time intervals. And that's very nice. Hmm. Uh, so, the following results. First of all, uh, Q sort um, was not uh, so slow as we expected. Mm. Uh, it takes only a few percent uh, of time in, in reality. Uh, it was a surprise for me. Mm. Well, uh, another mm, open sale uh, mm, legend uh, is that uh, access to global memory is uh, very slow, but uh, all access to memory which you need uh, takes uh, even one order order um, less <laughs> than Q sort, so it's uh, um, not a limited factor uh, at all. And uh, there is one significant factor, uh, as we can see here. Uh, this is uh, find uh, neighbors, surprisingly. Uh, and uh, all. Um, additional uh, functions which uh, pre help to prepare data for uh, this uh, function. So, I have removed completely all this from um, the simulation and uh, developed uh, three completely, uh, four completely new uh, open cell kernels. They are already uh, running. Uh, they are working correctly. And um, here we can see the work time. Mm. Again, uh, again, find neighbors takes <laughs> 13 milliseconds. Uh, but uh, this algorithm should be uh, linear. Uh, no any uh, n multiplied by logarithm n or and so, or so on. Well, this should work fast. Uh, even already we. Uh, get uh, final time mm, about uh, 14 uh, milliseconds against uh, 18 milliseconds in the original version. So mm, now I need to mm, adopt uh, these uh, functions which uh, left from uh, original version because they are good and they work nice. I need to adopt them to new uh, data structures uh, which I have introduced uh, here and uh, this will be 
the final step for uh, smooth particle uh, hydrodynamics uh, in basic realization. Then we will need uh, weakly compressible uh, SPH uh, also, but that's not so not so hard uh, because now I feel uh, open cell uh, significantly better than two weeks ago. It's not so hard as it seemed. It's very nice uh, technology. Uh, I like it very much. So I will continue in the following uh, way, and that is all right now. That's great. That's great progress. Is. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so just to kind of review, I guess to put that into the context of the full of the full sprint uh, or the full full release. Um, so in order to get here, um, we had to solve all the bugs that were remaining in the SPH algorithm that was uh, originally implemented back in that we that we had at the end of of the last release. Um, there had been a few bugs, and then at that point we were still on a CPU-based uh, SPH algorithm, and a lot of the work that we've done now is essentially completely rewriting that on OpenCL so that we can be GPU-based. Um, and I think that we, as as usual, uh, you know, as with as with research, these things obviously take more time than you expect that, that they will. Um, but um, we really are on the on the frontier here for this particular algorithm. So we have, as I, as I mentioned before, we have people who come in to uh, find this code on our site um, because they haven't done, you know, GPU-based uh, SPH uh, anywhere else. So, so we really are leading here. This is obviously costing us time for, for getting an integration, but nonetheless, it's extremely important for us to do it. So I'm pleased that, uh, that we have continued to get, you know, this far and we continue to push on this um, because ultimately, this is, I think, the, the right way for us to get the kind of simulation that we, we need here. We really do have to have something that's uh, based on uh, particles and, and it isn't just rigid. So, um, so um, we didn't get the full round trip uh, between the neuronal excitability and the muscle cell physics that we might, might have liked, but we have um, made a lot of progress on this. And, and I think our sort of 100 points here was sort of uh, probably uh, accurate in that this would be the hardest part. Um, so. Now we know that. Okay. So anyway, great, great update, and um, and uh, I'm really glad that we sort of. Oh, that's right. So transitioned, and then we've done a lot of performance, performance tuning and optimization. Right. So that actually was a big chunk of time. Is we had it right, but then we had to make it fast. Hi, uh, Stephen. I have that other demo. Yeah. Why don't you Why don't you show it? Yep. I'm sharing my screen. So this is basically the. When when it says down up there front end refactoring, this is what we mean, and this is mostly Matteo's work, and I helped uh, to get it to work. Um, can you see my screen? Yeah. So the so I'm just starting this thing. This should draw. So this is the external current. So it's running a bunch of neurons in parallel. Oh, we're just now plotting one. It's plotting just one, obviously. They're all the same. It's running <coughs> the, sa the same stuff for all of them. But I was just showing one. So now there's external current is zero. External current is zero milliamperes. Bringing it up to five. And there's a spike. Then it goes back to whatever it was before. And bring it up to ten. So this thing is going to the... And there's a glitch. You see those neurons, th those spikes seem to dance, that that shouldn't be happening. It's just the funky it's spiking. <laughs> yeah. It's a visual artifact of the visualization API that we are using, but that, that, that will go away. They should be all more or less the same, and they shouldn't definitely dance. <laughs> so you see that the same spike goes up and down, so it's just drawing it different in different ways, in different iterations. So what is it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that's what it looks like. Yeah. If I increase the voltage, then the frequency goes up, and if I bring it down, uh, go back minus 5, and it stops, minus 10, goes down a bit, 0, there's a spike. And then it goes back. So that that's basically it works much better than what we had before. It's something that you can show to people, and they say, "Oh, this is a proof of concept. It's using our GPU neuronal solver, <coughs> and so forth." 
So that's uh, basically... Go on. Uh, no, I just want to point out that right. uh, what Giovanni is showing is just its browser. I mean, it's not a client it's application. My, yeah, it's or, in my or, browser. Or, so th there's a lot of weird things going on behind that mm. <laughs> chart uh, being yeah, streamed from the GPU. Stuff. <laughs> we had to kind of work out the technicalities of how to go back and forth to the GPU and make it work so that uh, it would be performing efficiently. And there's still a few bugs. But as, w as I said to Stephen the other day, we know how to hide them. <laughs> they are in there, but we know how to work around them until we fix them. So, is, for example, is if... Go on, go on, Patrick, sorry. Sorry, is the model itself specified in NeuroML? No, not that's yet. The that's big the next step. Thing. That's, what, that's what we wanna, wanted to do for this uh, release, but we didn't get to do that. So okay. that's the next. The connect yeah. NeuroML connector to load up the neurons that we have in NeuroML, and, and then it runs in this thing. Yeah. So then I'm going, then going to suggest again to have a very nice, easy, very simple yeah. standalone Java version. But you, yeah. we'll, we would like to do that. I, 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 that's that's on the list as well. Yeah. That's definitely yeah. very important so that people can run the solver in a self-contained uh, yeah. jar or something. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, the simpler, the simpler the path as possible. Uh, if that can be pulled from GitHub, if I can run it here, I will happily hack away at that to get it uh, neuronal compliant. Um, but if there's extra layers, I mean, ideally it will fit in with the um, web application as well, but uh, the simplest app possible to um, run yeah. a spike neuron. The, the idea is that the, the, um, say the solver itself is in a separate standalone bundle, so what uh, the the effort will be going in a direction where whether you're basically using it from uh, uh, websites or client server architecture or whether you're just using it from a standalone client uh, it would be just the last bit that changes while yeah. the solver which is what we are working on right now will be exactly the same and the connector for NeurML is also uh, already there like uh, we did put it back into the next, in the first, uh, at the end of the release one, it's just like we need to rework it and uh, update the solver and integrate it. Uh, and hook it up. Yeah. Many things got in the way, but... <laughs> yeah, but I think it's I think it's great progress and, and yeah, packaging has uh, been on our list as well. We think, I think now we're going to get a bit closer to it. Also, for the purposes of the meeting that you guys are going to, the the GPU-based meeting uh, for neuronal solvers. Uh, yeah, that's next week. Coming up. So. Great. Awesome. So, progress being made there. That's excellent. Um, so the next epic uh, that we had to talk about is um, the Worm browser. And here we had a pretty ambitious goal of having the browser-based visualization show output from the muscle cell model. Um, since we haven't fully integrated the muscle cell model, I guess the prerequisite would have been to, you know, connect that to some of these pieces. I do think that we, um, in some sense, have pieces of that. So we have a browser-based visualization of a, an electrical trace, and we obviously have the full anatomy worm browser now, which is getting all these hits on the internet, which is good. So we certainly made a lot of progress towards that goal, but not quite on the, um, not quite exactly the way that we had imagined it as the a WebGL-based thing would actually show us what's coming out of, say, the SPH. Um, but I think that's just because our, our ambitions are a little bit beyond, um, you know, what we had time for. But um, I think in at least at the minimum, we certainly have more in the visualization space than we did at the beginning. So that's good. Okay. Uh, then on the database, we said, okay, as a model builder, I want the best definition of the muscle cell model and the motor neurons. And as a model, model builder, I want to have a target output of the muscle cell. So, um, all right, so on the best definition of the muscle cell and motor neurons, here we, um, we did, um, this is so, we, you know, a, a, by releasing the, the connectome as we had gotten farther, we, we had the spatial description in NeuroConstruct and NeuroML of the muscle cell and the uh, motor neurons. We have connectivity 
between the motor neurons and the other neurons um, of the other neurons of the system of C. elegans, which we did not have before. Um, and um, and we have started on the channels. Channels for the muscle cell have sub descriptions, um, and that's something that we had not had before. Um, obviously, we cleaned up the neuroconstruct. The, the cleaned up the neuroconstruct. Uh, neuroconstruct model cleaned up and consolidated. The neuroconstruct model. So um, I don't think we've gotten the best definition yet, um, but I think we've certainly made a lot of progress on, on improving the definition that we had there. And idea again there being that we would have more detail on the muscle cell and go out to the motor neurons that connected to that muscle cell as a way to focus our, um, our simulation activities on a subset of all the cells that are in the system. Um, so do we Tim or uh, Porg, do you want to add anything on those? Um, I know Porg obviously came in um, rather recently, but uh, Tim, any anything else on those? Uh, no, on I mean, chat. No. Oh yes, that's right. Yeah, um, I'm good. No, nope. no, that's right. No camera, but he does have audio. Great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, no. I mean, I think uh, you hit it all. I mean, we're we're still working towards yeah. you yes. know getting more more definitions and channels and as we talked uh, the other night um, you know it, there's I, there's there's a there's a point here where we have to change the mathematics into an actual physical or animated model and I'm, I'm still struggling with that but um, but uh, we can we can certainly get the parameters and the uh, mathematics in there to, to define the channels right yeah definitely Okay, um, so that's what we got there. And then target output of the muscle cell. Um, I guess that um, was really nothing to say in terms of in terms of having gotten that done. We surveyed some papers. I've tried to reach out to folks. Haven't had much success continuing to try on that one. But I think that one probably has fallen through with regards to having good output for the muscle cell. So that's something that we have to grapple with uh, in the next release. All right, component website. So I think this, we actually estimated the only 30, <laughs> 30 story points, which is story points for those of you who have been following the Agile thing um, or who are new, is kind of our way of trying to relatively uh, say how long something is going to take so that we have a good way to estimate it. Uh, we originally estimated that this would be quick. Um, obviously, this was more like 100 or something on that, on that realm. Um, but... Now we have a kick-ass website, so um, uh, very nice site. Um, so I'm glad that we invested time on that. I think that uh, everybody who comes to it is pleased with it. Um, I think that it speaks well of the project. I think it gets people's attention. It's a huge improvement over the Google code, so I don't think that we need to be uh, in any way sad that we invested that much time into it because it was, it was worth it. I'm glad. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a lot more to say about that. Okay, and then the last component Kickstarter, we want to launch a fundraising campaign to raise money for the project. Um, and that we're really just getting to right now. Um, the only progress that we have made is that we have um, started the investigations into what this entails and begun um, uh, drafting the Kickstarter pledge. One thing that we found out, um, we originally thought that we would need to apply to Kickstarter before we could ever begin to shape the page that prospective donors would land on. And some, somehow, a few weeks ago, I think maybe Kickstarter changed something internally, but the scope for what we needed to do, actually, there was no intermediate application. It was just directly craft your donor page from the beginning. So this actually changed the scope of what we needed to do, um, and that's why we're, you know, working on that that piece. Yeah, and that's not that's probably more than thirty. Uh, uh, identify potential partner to make a um, a video. And so, uh, yeah, more to work on. Yeah, and that's probably more than thirty as well. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So. Um, 
We only have 20 minutes left, uh, so obviously we're not going to get a full sense of planning release 3. But this is what we had planned for release 2. Um, and I think now we need to think a bit. Um, so the idea of doing things and, and putting them into releases and estimating time is so that we learn from what, what worked well and what didn't work. And um, we learn to uh, where we need to be more conservative. Um, make more conservative plans. So I think obviously one thing that came up here is that this plot probably was a little bit more ambitious. I think in release one, we were able to hit more of our endpoints uh, that we had, that we had planned out. So I think we got a little excited. I got a little excited. Let's just let's <laughs> put the put the blame where it where it's out. I got a little excited about about what we could uh, get done, and so um, so I sort of crafted this plan. And um, I think for this next. Um, release, we probably want to think about um, being a bit more conservative. That being said, we have added a few more uh, folks. So um, I think that if we scale what we have here back to something like 60% of what we wanted to get done um, compared to this uh, version, if we scale back by about a third, that might be about right now for this um, somewhat expanded group. Um, so I want to just open it up now and sort of say, OK, so last sprint we wanted to um, focus on a muscle cell and use that as a rallying point. Um, does that does that still make sense? Um, should we not have that kind of a focus? Should we have a different focus? Should we have multiple focuses? Um, uh, should we divide it up in different ways? Um, and for this, I, I want to hear, I think, first from the newest folks. So um, Mike, Borg, Alex, um, and then, and then hear from some of the older folks as well to get your views, um, uh, because uh, you guys are the ones with, with the newest energy. And just sort of, this is your opportunity to say like, okay, you know, what you've been doing is great, but we really need to do X, or what you've been doing is wrong, and we need to do X. I mean, this is this is your time to sort of provide, you know, what you what you think when you see this, the full scope of what we, who we have, and what we can do, uh, what we should do, uh, in the next uh, about six months, period. So um, maybe in, in opposite order. So Mike, um, why don't you just uh, you know uh, any any broad thoughts, and I'll, I'll start collecting them here. Um, well, I think whether to focus on a muscle cell or not, kind of, in my view, depends on just what sort of data is available. I think it still makes sense for the time being to focus on whatever we have the most data for to sort of advance as much as we can in one area. What I'm hoping to contribute to is the optimization side of things, and I think if we have a reasonable amount of data on that and a, a, a sort of a reasonably good model, that we can we can close that that chapter mostly. I think we can say. I, I'm, I'm my my view is that with a good amount of data and a reasonably good model, in say two or three months' time, we can say the process for optimizing these cells is, is established, it's complete, it's, it's, it's something we know how to do now and we can focus on other things. So if we have, it, I, I don't know, so my question I guess would be how much data do we have for the neurons? This We have very little. Um, so I think when we got started and we, we said we were going to we get this data for the muscle cell and we wanted to, to go out for it, I think I had a couple of thoughts. Um, one was that we can already see, based on videos that people have posted, that um, you know, for so one video that we have seen is an olfactory neuron and its calcium trace in response to an odorant, um, a sensory neuron. And I thought that at worst case scenario, we could do some image processing on this video and we could extract the time course of the calcium, um, and we could kind of uh, encode this data in a manner that would allow us to at least train that sensory neuron. And I was hoping that we would have better luck with, with this muscle cell uh, data than we have. Um, so uh, right now, I think that this is a challenge for us to figure out. And it may mean that we either, uh, you know, I, we, we may just have to make some strategic decisions about what order we can do things in, uh, given that we don't have a lot of that. Um, now, there's another way to go with this, too, which is potentially up on the behavioral level, um, where there might, where we might be able to get videos of, I mean, there are videos of worms moving on, posted on YouTube right now. Uh, we might consider doing some image processing on that. But again, one of the prerequisites 
is that we can take something which is encoded in video form and turn it into form that can be trained against. So this data challenge is something that um, you know I need I need help with. I, I think that uh, obviously by myself I haven't been as successful as I would like to be. So I think we need to as a group think about this challenge and and put our collective feelers out there for what we can what we can get here and uh, who we can partner with and, and really what makes sense um, and and what is what is the minimum amount of data that we can do something. With. Yeah, I, well, I would I agree. Think, Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that from that it seems to me that there's a whole, there's a quite a bit of momentum at least on, on the muscle side of things and for the time being at least my perspective is that it would be a good con place to continue for now. That's all. Okay. Or? Um, I would agree that uh, you have to be driven by um, uh, how much data is out there, how much of an understanding of each individual cell uh, is actually out there and how much data you can actually get your hands on to model, to put into the model. Um, I'm surprised there isn't actually more specific, I mean, it, there isn't even a specific review saying uh, some specific subsystem of the um, T. elegans can be modeled. I mean, are, are there any other existing um, mo uh, anatomical, anatomically based models that have um, some sort of figures for um, any of these cells? There are there are models, um, but what we're really lacking are the raw data that nobody ever publishes. Mm. Uh, so, for example, I was having a conversation. Let, just just to review kind of what I've done. So there's efforts. Um, so there's there's a, a, a paper recently that did a heroic recording of muscle cell uh, that we got a hold of from. Uh, from one of our collaborators, and I emailed the author on that one to say, hey, can you share some of our traces with us, and no response. So um, then I talked to the people at Wormbase. Wormbase is an aggregator of, um, Wormbase is, is an aggregator of all sorts of data, genomics, proteomics, it's sort of the place to go to get any data that anyone has published on uh, C. elegans. They don't even have a data type for a uh, trace uh, that somebody has recorded um, you know, from from an image or, or electrophysiological data, they just don't they just don't capture it right now. Um, so they're not they're not able to provide us any sources on that. So um, really, the, at the moment, the search is for individual investigators who can help us. So I now have a um, couple more people that I can email who have done some work in this, um, and uh, and waiting to hear back from them. But the challenge is that we basically need to either partner with a lab who can collect this data for us and give it to us for the first time, or we have to kind of follow the, you know, follow the, the, the trails that we can to different investigators. But I don't know, if, if all of us were out there, like, finding prospective people that have data and emailing them, that would be fine with me. Um, mm -hmm. so, so this is kind of the challenge. We also have a whole library of, you know, articles. I haven't necessarily read all of them, um, mm -hmm. but uh, some with regards to muscle cell and muscle cell physiology in the Mendeley folder, I encourage you guys to, you know, have a look at and see if there are additional authors that we should be reaching out to. But, yeah, I mean, and, you know, from the mammalian side, there's not a lot of this kind of data either. So it's understandable to some extent yeah. that it, we can't find it. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of becoming um, a problem. <laughs> okay. Isn't uh, Balash working on around that area? So one of his plans was to do some of that stuff, like recordings. Yeah. Sorry if, if I are interrupted you, Podrick. No, no, that's fine. He, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, we'll see. But uh, today, um, we want to be able, to, you know, we need to, we need to plan, you know, for what we have right now. Um, and see what we can what we can do going forward. So mm -hmm. anyway, Borg, did you want to have other other comments sort of outside of that specific issue though, in terms of broad goals for the project for the next six months and directions that you see, particularly because you know particularly with your perspective, looking out at um, you know neuroconstructs directions and neuromel's directions and well crossing well, scales and um, well before that, uh, just related to the kind of like physiological data. I mean, maybe have one of the kind of top level components that uh, is focused on as building uh, some sort of wiki, some sort of um, 
overview of what physiological data is out there, what papers are out there, what um, maybe pulling some figures from some papers, uh, but just actually to have one of the top level tasks of the project uh, as compiling a wiki, compiling a database of what's understood about these, um, maybe making an overview, making a summary, filling in a Wikipedia article or something like that, or maybe even having it semi-internal, but um, to try to structure this information so that somebody new joining the project can just read through this to get an overview of what knowledge is out there about the physiology of uh, muscle cells and uh, individual neurons and somebody who joins the project with this background knowledge can just look at that and say, well, actually, um, that's a task I want to specifically contribute to. But So, I mean, t make a top-level um, item for compiling this knowledge that will actually go into the um, uh, physical model. That is a great idea. That is a great um, idea. Because that's, I mean, I have, I've looked at Wormbase, I've downloaded some of those chapters on physiology. I have 60 pages there waiting to be read, but uh, if I can go to the wiki, and get a very brief overview of what's known about, even if it's a statement that very little is known, um, then that would be very good. So, I mean, compiling that there, having a link there, and then somebody who can come to the project and see that and say, well, actually, I know a lot about physiology, or even Metacoan can come along and say, um, I want to fill in that wiki, then... I like so that idea very so much. Sold, so yeah. We do have papers around some of the channels that have been identified, and and we have some around some of the gap junctions. Um, but but uh, but it's not all in one place, and um, and uh, and we could we could do a really good review basically of this subject yeah. in a yeah. fact. Uh, An online so review, like a Wikipedia page specifically for physio yeah. electrophysiology of um, uh, neurons and muscle cells, but it'll show where the gaps in knowledge are, and it is something that you could sit down with, as I say, the likes of Metacool and, and get her to fill it, work on it for two hours, and it'll be a hell of a lot better. But um, make a top-level um, uh, uh, item task for that. Beautiful. Okay. And it's also going to be great as an online resource, resource. For, yeah. for, for other people, as you were saying, Butter. Yeah. Open Worm Wiki. <laughs> Right. Well, uh, yeah, uh, physiology. Uh, yeah, uh, specifically for physiology, specifically what for what's going into um, the um, individual cells, for what's known about the gap junction connections, for what's known about the synapses. I mean, it can hopefully just be maybe two, three paragraphs on each of these, but it will have to be something there that everybody in the who joins the project can read and understand, and somebody who knows the physiology can update with a view towards educating everybody in the project and showing what's known. So, yeah. but I mean, it, it does need to be brief. It doesn't, it shouldn't really be something that will have to go into the model and will have to be shown in the model. So if somebody says that um, there are these five types of channels that are known in these principal cells, or if somebody says that, okay, a muscle can contract this percentage and it doesn't actually fire action potentials, but it grab it, or if it hovers between minus 50 and minus 70 millivolts or something like that. This information needs to be put there, and it needs to be ultimately reflected in the models. Great. Additional that's additional suggestions for yeah, and release I, and, and that's Well, I wanted yeah. to say is that, that that's what I've been working yeah. on, and that's why the spreadsheets are there that we've, we've tried to start to create, was to try to pull some of that data together. I, I, it, yeah, the spreadsheets need to be there, but you also are. We also need in the project to be able to win a four page uh, summarizing what's known about uh, synaptic connectivity in the worm that will be put into the model. I agree. Um, I agree. If the cells, but um, uh, hopefully Balash and hopefully various other people who are hands on like physiologists can come to the project and see the general uh, purpose for that wiki and sit down, edit that, and try to um, get what a summary of what they know about electrophysiology of these cells into that wiki, and then the models ultimately will have to uh, reflect that. I mean, even saying that some sensory neurons are chemically sensing, um, some other, sens other neurons are, say, temperature sensing, um, and yeah, just to have a one or two sentences there pointing to papers, and if somebody wants to start implementing that in a model neuron, great. 
and that, and that, that by the way, is in the uh, spreadsheet. But uh, I, I understand what you're saying about verbalizing it instead of just looking at the raw data. Yeah. Agreed. All right, Port, do you want to you make any additional comments? And then we're going to have to probably close it and uh, see if, uh, see when we're next available. Still working on NeuroML, our NeuroConstruct project, and hopefully I'll start to move it to the uh, uh, GitHub in the next week or two. No, 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 but I mean, yeah, but I mean in terms of thinking of like six months down the road, like things that the project sh um, should do, um, not necessarily that you, that you personally would do, but just, you know, yeah. big, big directions and big direction given what we've given what we've done and what we should do based on what we've done and, and just that whole thing uh, I, I think I mentioned before just um, very briefly about uh, not just having the full-scale C. Elgin's uh, project um, with every cell every um, uh, sensory neuron and so on have maybe a hundred cell equivalent it can look like a box it can look like the original cyber elegans but uh, which can be used for testing uh, a lot of the um, just, just the muscle cells, just the uh, motor neurons, um, and try putting that into the uh, physical uh, environment. And then you know you'll have complete control over everything that's in there. Uh, you'll know it's just supposed to wiggle. You'll know it's just supposed to move. And yeah, I think that's a great know. point. Yeah. Um, I, I was thinking that. that yeah, go yeah. on. Sorry, 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 sorry. I didn't yeah. want me to. But if, if you know that it's only supposed to do locomotion, if you add on some sensory neurons that are attracting it to some odor, then that's all it does. But um, you don't have the added um, overhead of uh, maybe 200 other neurons or whatever, any 100 other uh, muscle cells. Um, then at least you'll be able to test a lot of things and um, uh, you'll have something practical to show people that might actually do what it's supposed to do without as I say, the overhead of trying to model in every individual cell. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just taking. I'm just taking this down. So, how do you how do you propose that to scale it? Like, there are many ways that we could scale it down. Not uh, do you not, not generated from the existing uh, morphology. Um, okay. Manually created, roughly along the same dimensions. Um, just create maybe I don't know maybe twenty different. Um, uh, yeah, as I say, maybe in total 100 cells, but something which will wiggle motor neurons, which will move um, muscle cells, which will move motor neurons, which will make them move. And um, yeah. Well, so what ab what about the original cyber yeah. model itself? I mean, that's one one idea that I've been toying with. Uh, so th it would be great, in my opinion, to to get the original cyber elegance and port it into our current simulation engine. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what the guys who actually did that work think about that, but I, I think it would be a great idea, and I think it's on the same line of thought of this thing that Padraig is, is proposing. Yeah. No, I mean, that's that's what you need, something with complete yeah. control over it that um, has, all, has a subset of the systems that you're actually um, and that will behave yeah. like, I mean, the neurons behave like real neurons, the muscle cells behave like muscle cells, but you're not, uh, you don't have the rest of the things in there, and it doesn't mm -hmm. do everything, you're not claiming it does everything, but what it's supposed to do, it does, and you can say that, yes, you know, that system. So, Andre, do you want me to, do you want me to update them on, uh, on what's going on there with, a, with that publication? Mm, well, I'm trying to do something uh, offline, um, but soon, uh, closer to the 8th of April, of course, uh, I will upload it and um, it will be ready for common um, view, discussion, improvement, and so on. So let me just, just so as a way of introduction, so um, the Cyber Elegance work uh, has been written up into a manuscript. Um, when we originally started the project a year ago, um, they had submitted the project to a journal that I will not name, will which, not name. Um, uh, which basically sat basically on the manuscript on the with manuscript. zero feedback. Not, this is rejected, not, um, we really like it, nothing. I mean, nothing. They got nothing for months and months and months. And I was, I gave Andre some suggestions about what to do next, and basically, eventually, they, 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 they just resubmitted the same manuscript, uh, uh, up, up, upgraded version of, of the manuscript to a different journal. And now we're working with that journal. And um, so this week, Andre just got um, reviews back on that uh, on that paper for the original Cyber Elegance work. And um, 
the reviews are, um, we will accept it if you make these changes and you make these clarifications. And so I've sat with, with Andre here a bit and we've just gone through what all those things are um, in order to improve it. And some of them are just a few different ana analyses and some of them are, are additional explanations um, and this kind of thing. So it's in revision. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and so anyway, so there'll be a publication out for that. Um, you know, once these changes go back in, uh, there's sort of a you know, couple week deadline, so um, he's got to he's got to do some things quickly. But the point is, is that he's going back and revisiting that cyber elegance model and that code um, in order to respond to these changes. So there is an opportunity there for us to you know um, revisit that code and think about it in, in in the larger context of this of this project. Now, obviously, the things that we didn't like about that was that there wasn't as much biological realism. But at the point of what you're saying now, Porg, is that it's useful for us to have something that may not, may not have all the biological realism, but at least like wiggles, then, um, then you know, I think it's worth us revisiting. Certainly, you know, it'd be good once this thing is, is published as a way to, for people should have access to it so that they can play with it. Um, yep. And, uh, you know, and, and, and Andre has contributed the code, so it's there in, in the Dropbox now. Um, we haven't put it all out, you know, in terms of the, in terms of the open repository yet, I don't know. If, I, I don't know what uh, what their Andre, what your latest feeling is about that. But um, but we should just think about how we can how we should incorporate that more. Obviously, it's whatever comfort level those guys have. It was their work. Uh, they did it completely before we ever came around. So um, so we'll we'll have to balance that. But I I, th I think if we I mean I I agree with the. Having, I, th I think we've recently seen the power of uh, actually having something to show off, like with a warm browser, what it actually means, even just in terms of uh, like uh, advertisement for the project. And like, let's not forget that advertisement brings potential new funds and blah, blah, blah. So I think it is very important to have something to show off. I would still uh, go ahead and do it in the same, basically in the currently come with the same direction we've been taking so far as in uh, we have an SPH solver in the simulation engine I like ideally what I would like to do is to have that solver playing with uh, a subset of the worm and uh, having then a front end which is capable of streaming the worm moving then it, it won't be the yet the biological accurate worm, but it will be, uh, basically it will, it will translate into another website where people can go and where people can see the worm moving. Now, there will be disclaimer like we are not done yet, we are just playing, but the, <laughs> just to give you an idea of where this project will bring us, uh, and so it's not as much as like uh, publishing the cyber elegant per se. It's more about uh, there is feedback. Okay, sorry, there was feedback, and I was listening to my voice. Couldn't speak. Um, so it's not about like uh, uh, m making public the cyber elegance per se. I think it's like reusing the same ideas and the same concept in, in terms of having a simplified version, but that is still using like the solvers that we would be building and that we are building anyway. It would still be using the same front end that we plan to build in terms of you know WebGL engine. So it's like it's n it's not a real deviation from what we were doing because in order to do that with a current simulation engine like we need to finish the SPH solver we need to finish the front end it, it is just in terms of maybe a separate uh, a parallel effort uh, one effort will be in terms of integration with a more biological accurate simulation of a muscle cell and in parallel we will have more of a toy model but at the end of the day, we are talking, uh, uh, I, I think we should try to drive this in a way that we're just thinking of like different inputs to the simulation engine. In one case, you have a biological accurate uh, set of uh, muscle cell and uh, motor neuron. On the other side, you have a not as biological accurate uh, model, but that can still be fed to the same simulation engine to just yeah. give a different result. So this is 
the direction I would take personally. I wouldn't like to deviate too much from what we're doing just for the purpose of showing off something, but there is definitely great value in having such a, such a small, and we've been discussing this since the beginning, like a toy worm uh, that mm. could help us validate the technology and uh, yeah. basically something moving on a website. Which is, would be which is still a lot of work. So it's a toy, but it's really interesting in terms of yeah. behavior and everything. And uh, I mean, I think yeah, th those type of models are published. Those type of models are yeah. useful research tools. So I mean, yeah, putting, exactly. putting a hundred cell version out there, it would be useful if it if it is an electrophysiological uh, version, moving muscles. So and it can be used to test the back end. It can be used to test the neural construct project yeah. and test uh, running it on neuron and everything else. So yeah. And it'll probably be there a lot quicker than the, uh, yeah, than the real version. thing. Yeah, Stephen, not not to mention that such a toy would help us to be in a position to start developing and support Balash for his PhD thesis, because once you have something that moves, you can put in place an architecture that actually takes, uh, on one hand, uh, the input from Balash's. Uh, uh, analysis. On the other hand, the outcome of what will be the output of the simulation engine, and then you can start developing such a uh, architecture for comparing the two. And then at some stage, you will swap what is getting simulated, so it will become relevant from a biological point of view. But still, you you've been able to work on it uh, much earlier. I would propose that we don't call it a toy because I'm not <laughs> comfor comfortable with that. But uh, I, I think we understand what, what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it's a great suggestion. Uh, in the interest of time, I should I should cut it off now. I, I, I don't like running over. I know everybody um, does schedule this in their different time zones, and, and uh, I don't want to run late. So um, let me just make the very last thing. Um, so can folks do this meeting rather than in two weeks, in one week, um, so that we can pick up right here where we left off um, on the release three planning, having now gone through the review? and plan um, the next piece. Also, hopefully, Balash can join us for that, because um, I know he wants to weigh in on several things. Uh, you are weak, we'll, we'll, like? we'll be in Munich. Me and we'll Matteo will be in Munich. Already? Uh, yes. yes. That's right. OK. And if people don't know what that's for, it's basically we uh, submitted a, an abstract for the neuronal solver. It's a GPU neuronal symposium. And the abstract got accepted, so there's going to be a talk about the neuronal solver developed for the Open World project. So it's going to be an opportunity to present the project as well. OK. I'll send out a Schedule 1 link then, and I'll actually send it out. Um, fill in your availability for two meetings. Um, one will be for a release three planning meeting. And the other will be for uh, the Kickstarter meeting for those of you who uh, want to join us and, and have that discussion. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, have times available for the next two weeks um, for us to, to potentially do there. And, uh, and then we'll see if we can meet again. But um, sorry, Alex, we didn't get to you yet. Um, we'll pick up with you. We'll start with you uh, next time um, with okay. your thoughts about what we should no do problem. as we go forward. And uh, and and uh, we'll go from there. And Mike, if you have additional thoughts as well, you know, feel free as well to to bring them and contribute them. Sorry, we also didn't get to your your piece. I know that you've done some additional stuff here. Um, um, so feel free to post that on Teambox as well um, to give that update. I did want this particular meeting to be a looking sort of towards the future and, and reviewing the past. But um, but you did make some you did some good stuff. Also, Alex, I saw that you checked some stuff in. So feel free to, uh, to update us all on, on Teambox um, okay. on that stuff. OK? OK. All right. Thanks, guys. As always, uh, email me if you have any questions, concerns, and, uh, and we'll be in touch uh, sooner this time than two weeks. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.